Hey, what's going on everybody? I am Matt Pruitt and I wanted to do a quick short video just to give a shout out to the folks over at Blackmagic Design. You know, I have been interested in the A10 Mini Extreme ISO product and they said, yeah, we got you back. We'll send you one so you can check it out and see if you like it. And yes, they did do that. I was curious because for work, you know, I work with twit.tv and do my show hands-on photography. Go subscribe and check that out. For work, I use the ATEM um, Mini Pro, this right here. This is the ATEM Mini Pro that we got at the studio and, and brought it here for my home studio. And I love it because it's just, it's so daggum intuitive. If you don't know what an ATEM is, I'm sure you should know by now. Um, an ATEM is a video switcher. It's It uses HDMI input, so if you have a camera, that has an HDMI output. You can take that output, put it into the inputs on the back of the ATEM Mini, or this in this case, the ATEM Mini Pro. ATEM Mini Pro can take up to four HDMI cameras and allows you to do your own broadcast, if you will, for Twitch, YouTube, what have you, or just if you want to just record something and use multiple cameras, you can do that and switch from from the device right here. What I do from a software side of things is I use a piece of software called XSplit, which is what's recorded in this video right now. And there's some advantages to XSplit and there's some disadvantages to it. Uh, if you never heard of XSplit, just think of it as a paid version of OBS. So I get all of these recording options built in. I get all of these streaming options built in, yada, yada, yada. I can switch cameras like right now. I have a doggy cam. Well, I'm calling it doggy cam. So if I want to switch to that, I just click on the screen. And this was a camera that points to the floor because normally the dogs are lying down right here just doing what they do, you know? And all of that's just right there inside of software. The difference is that camera is not an HDMI camera. That's just a USB camera. So the quality isn't gonna look as good. It's a little raggedy. <laughs> well, it ain't raggedy, it's just a webcam. Um, it's not quite as nice as this Blackmagic 6K that I'm using right now. But then I also have another camera that sits up here. This is a uh, Canon M, dang it, is it an M200? <laughs> I can't remember, but I've, I've liked playing with this thing. It's got clean HDMI out and it's connected to the A10 device that I have now. So what I'm testing or been playing around with is the A10 Mini Extreme the idea of being able to switch video um, pretty seamlessly from a hardware standpoint, as well as some of the other things. When you get an ATEM, you get some software and it's called the ATEM Software Control Center. Very, very simple to use. Let me switch over to my other screen to show you this. And this is the Software Control Center. And if you look at the layout, it is laid out exactly like an ATEM is laid out, okay? So you can have this top row, which is your program view, which is what you see going out to your recording or to your stream or what have you. And then this preview row, which is in green, which is if you have more than one camera um, and you're ready to cut to the camera that's in preview, when you cut into the cameras in preview, you're saying, I'm going to cut to this, whatever this one is that's designated in green right there on the screen. Okay, so if I want to switch to camera two, which in this instance is this overhead camera, I just hit cut on the A10 and it cuts right to it. Now, the beauty of this is if I still want to use the software um, to do my cuts and so forth, I can do that. I just literally click right there where it says cut and it cuts right to it. Or if I wanted to be even more graceful and not just a jarring cut, I can just hit auto right there and it just sort of fades it up, just like it would by dragging it up and down on this little T-bar. Pretty cool stuff, right? So yeah, the ATEM software works pretty good and gives you a lot of different options from a broadcaster standpoint. Um, it has picture in picture and things of that nature, but the biggest thing, in my opinion, is the ability to have what they call super source. And there's some other things too that I'm gonna point out momentarily, but the biggest thing that in my opinion is the super source capabilities. Okay, so what is a super source? The best way I can explain a super source is you have your ATEM device and it's got 
all of these inputs on it. And when you switch to them, you can say, um, camera one is a source, camera two is a source, okay? But if I want to have a whole new source that's gonna encompass both camera one and camera two, I'm gonna need a super source. And if you're looking at, say, like a TriCaster board or anything like that, it's gonna be called like a mixed effect or an ME. So with the super source, I can take camera one and camera two and put it all in one particular view and give it a nice, beautiful background to make it look just like it, it, your news broadcast and things like that. Um, I, I think it works really well. I don't have this camera set to, you know, show like an interview scene or anything like that, but you'll get the gist. So let me switch over to the software here again. And the software has the super source buttons uh, right here and right here, but it's also a super source button right here on the on the hardware and I'm going to put it in preview right now. So we'll just say super source right there. So now the super source is in is in preview because you see it's got green right there on the screen. So let's configure this super source. Let me switch off to this view here. Get rid of that. OK, so let's configure the super source. I want it to be camera one and camera two. Uh, so I go over here to this menu hit super source and you got all of these different layouts here. So if I wanted to just click on this four box right there, it'll give me the four box and I can show you what it looks like right now. Uh, four box would be like that. And that does absolutely nothing for me. So let's go back over here and play around. Four box isn't gonna look good because I just got two cameras. So I'm gonna do two bots here and then I'm going to configure each box. Box one is going to be camera one, which is my 6K. Box two is going to be camera two, which is the overhead camera. In this instance, it's an overhead. My apologies for that. And I have all of these additional controls as far as the, the positioning and the size and, and, and so forth. So now we have these configured. So let's go ahead and switch to the super source in program view just by cutting to it like so. So if you look on my screen now, there we have the, the new super source layout. And this looks fairly good other than the cropping is not quite right on my view here. Because if you look at it, the top has these black bars and the bottom has these black bars. That's partly because of the way my camera is set up right now in the aspect ratio. So. Let's just fix that. So we'll go back into the software and just see how easy it is to fix this. Uh, so let's go right there. We'll switch to box one, which is camera one. And then we have this little button that says crop. And I'm just gonna tell it a crop value of one on the top and a crop value of one on the bottom like that. And then if I switch back, it's getting a little bit better. I could probably crop it out a little bit more on the top. So let's go back over here. I'm not even going to show it. I'm just, we'll just watch it update on the screen. Like that. There. Looks good, right? And then you see this background that's showing up on the super source. That is something that I plugged in as the uh, media player. And if I go back to that screen, you'll see that this has this little media player tab and you can plug all of that stuff in and figure out what works best for you. But that's the super source on it. There's other advantages to using the, the ATEM and, and all of its awesome products here. Uh, for this one in particular, the ISO, the ISO version, this allows you to have a, a recorded track for every single input that you put in. You can put up to eight inputs on here, up to eight cameras, okay? And when you go to do your recording or whatnot, you hit record and then you can record it to a hardware device, this nice little hard drive. This is a USB-C SSD that I have connected that. It's gonna to record to that, but instead of just recording one particular file, it's gonna give me the option to record each camera as its own track inside of a DaVinci Resolve product uh, project file. If you're not familiar with DaVinci Resolve, I'm working on that myself. I'm still trying to get a little bit better at it before I start doing tutorials on it. Been using it for about 
probably about seven or eight months now. Um, but when you pull it in, it pulls up your timeline and it allows you to see each and every camera that you had recording at that time of the shoot. And it gives them its own video tracks inside of the timeline. It's one project file with multiple tracks in it. And that's for video and audio. And all of that is managed right here on the ATM, um, whether it's the, the focusing and things like that. Heck, I can even like change the focus of my camera right now, live and on the, on the stream here. So let's just, uh, I'll get out of the way. So I should be a little out of focus right now, right? Good. So all I have to do is inside of this software is just click the little autofocus button and there it's doing its thing. And I love that it, just, it makes it super easy to manage your cameras. Granted, that feature is only going to work with the black magic cameras that are connected to it. You know, I could try and work it with uh, this other camera over here. Let's see if I switch to my overhead camera like so unlock it and change the focus. It's not doing much of anything, you know, and that's OK. But that's what you get when you work with things that are inside of the same ecosystem. For in this instance, it is the Black Magic ecosystem. I love it. I, I, I love all of these capabilities. I love the additional camera controls here to, to change the color grading. And I even made a macro to make sure this thing looks the way I need it to look. And you know, podcast, I hit run and it does that. Boom, we're good to go. Um, if I want to really, really dive into the color grading of it before I even, you know, do post processing. I can just change some things here in the lift camera and gain just like I would inside of DaVinci Resolve. So if I want to warm up my shadows, I just literally go to the lift and drag my shadows to more of a warmer tint, just like that. See, that does not look good right now, right? If I want to get even crazier, I can do it so in the highlights and the gain and mid mid range and all of that good stuff that I highly <laughs> am against right now because this does not look good at all. Fortunately, I have macros and I can put all of that stuff back to the way I want it to. So I'll just do a reset there and hit my macros and just tell it to make sure we're back to what I like because I have my color temperature just a little bit cooler than what most people like to do. All right, so that is it. The A10 Mini Extreme ISO, amazing piece of software and hardware all in one package. You can get the A10 Extreme, A10 Mini Extreme ISO online for $1,295. That's $1,295. You got eight inputs, you got super source, you got all kinds of camera control and audio control and project control and isolated track recording and just so much daggum goodness, y'all. And I, I think this is a heck of a value right now. I don't need this for my workflow, but there's some things that I got in the works for the future. I'm going to need this. So I think I need to put my 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 panties together and start saving up and getting getting everything lined up for an A10 mini stream for myself. All right, folks, check out the affiliate links in the video description and on this website and uh, get yourself an A10 Mini Extreme ISO if you're really trying to amp up your video production. I'm Ant Pruitt and I'll catch y'all later.